Now, have you heard of Ambazonia? The country doesn't exist, well, only in the minds of successionists in two English-speaking regions in majority French-speaking Cameroon. Anglophones who feel marginalised have been protesting for months. Protests have been quashed, but at the same time, Cameroon's president, Paul Bia, has been open to dialogue. Today's Focus report is by Patrick Fandio and Emmanuel Landy. A child's innocent stare through one eye. Fourteen-year-old Aline became a symbol for English-speaking secessionists in Cameroon. She was shot in her father's house on October 1st, the day the Cameroonian separatists proclaimed their republic, called Ambazonia. A proclamation that was severely repressed. I was just sitting down. I was not doing anything. I want the people to help me so that I can see work and go back to school again. People should continue praying for me so that I can get work. Aline's family live here in Kumbo, a well-known separatist stronghold in the two Anglophone regions in Cameroon regions renamed Ambazonia by supporters of the secession. Ambazonia is a virtual country, a ghost state that separatists have been dreaming of for 56 years, a dream that has been resuscitated by activists like 70-year-old Vincent Jumbam. This is an almanac which was gotten in 1955. Kept as a souvenir, the map of the former British Cameroon before being united to French Cameroon in 1961, a territory that the Anglophone separatists of today have claimed as Ambazonia. Their future English-speaking country, with their founding fathers, that's already got its own flag. This is the flag of the Southern Cameroons. A great flag indeed. I respect it. I have it in all the corners of my own house. Here is one. Here is one and a good number in my cupboard. It is a symbol of the new country, Ambazonia. It is that which gives you, one, a sense of patriotism. I am of this nation. At home, this independent supporter watches just one television channel 24 hours a day. The Southern Cameroon Broadcasting Corporation the Ambazonia Channel, declared illegal by the Cameroonian authorities as a secessionist propaganda tool broadcast from abroad. Despite the TV channel and the flag, it's not enough for this elderly activist who even dreams of having an army. We shall have our own army, which is going to take care of every other thing else. We, in our communities, we are also ready for any eventuality we need only direction. We still have La Republique du Cameroon in our territory. It is now left to us to look at all possible ways to get them out of our territory so that we can manage our economy, we can manage our administration, and we can manage the life that is supposed to be us. The name Ambazonia comes from Cameroon's history and geography. The word comes from the banks of the Mungo River, a natural barrier between French and English-speaking Cameroon. Close by lies Ambas Bay, discovered by the British missionary Alfred Sacker in 1858. The territory inspired the name for the fantasy republic of Ambazonia. The future republic plans to establish its capital city here, in Bea, the provincial capital of Cameroon's other Anglophone region. On the streets, dozens of military units and armed police are on patrol, ever since public buildings and security forces have been the target of violent attacks by a new terrorist organisation, according to the authorities, who are determined to track down secessionists. To meet the independence leaders of Ambazonia, you have to leave Cameroon and head to neighbouring English-speaking Nigeria 
which has become a refuge for Cameroonian activists. Behind the creation of a provisional government in exile, led by Susuku Ayuk Tabid Julius. The self-proclaimed Ambazonian president is the government of Cameroon's public enemy number one. I am the president of the Federal Republic of Ambazonia. We are going to separate. We have restored our independence. We are going to discuss the terms of that separation and then we'll build a wonderful nation that I would invite you in a few short years to come and be witnesses to what we are saying today. He denies accusations by a newspaper in Cameroon of misappropriation of funds of a public company. The computer engineer is organising the battle for freedom and the birth of Ambazonia, financed largely by the English-speaking Cameroonian diaspora. After lobbying the United Nations and Western diplomats, he isn't ruling out a military armed struggle. En tant que président de la République, toutes les options sont sur la table. Y compris l'option militaire. Si c'est une option, oui. Et c'est la lutte pour laquelle je suis prêt à vivre et je suis prêt à combattre, je suis prêt à mourir. Ambazonia, a name that evokes more and more tension in English-speaking Cameroon. For more on this, I'm now joined in the studio by Cherina Girolon from the uh, International Federation for Human Rights. She's the Deputy Director of the Africa Desk. Hello, thank you very much for your time. First of all, just how much support for succession is there in Cameroon's two English-speaking regions? Well, I think um, that they definitely have support, but I think, and, and your uh, video has illustrated the way the, the situation has deteriorated seriously. Um, but I think that it's important to remember that um, this is a very complex situation and there are a number of uh, multiple uh, positions, uh, including within the Anglophone um, uh, people um, with regard to what should be the response from the state. Uh, there are a number of um, uh, requests that continue to be made by those considered as being more uh, moderate in their requests. Um, and um, what we have seen over the past few weeks is the fact that the positions that are considered as being the more uh, radicalized position are those that actually uh, occupy the public space at the moment. So the position of the secessionist and the position of the authorities who portray um, uh, the Anglophone people most of the time as being terrorists. Um, in the middle, we have the positions of those um, that are considered as being more uh, moderate. Uh, we would like to enter into uh, an inclusive uh, debate and dialogue with the authorities and this voice is, is not necessarily being heard. Um, there haven't been talks yet then. I understood that there had been some talks, but perhaps not with all these different elements, like you say. There have been a number of talks uh, since the beginning of, of the crisis in October last year. Um, but what um, the opposition continue to say is, is the fact that the responses that have been put on the table by the authorities are not um, um, enough and, and that there is a need to have a really um, a national debate around the, the, the questions of uh, marginalization of the Anglophone uh, region, about um, the, the, the question of um, what should be the structure of the state, whether uh, there should be a state that is a federal state, um, and, and basically how uh, the authorities should enter into a, a process of decentralizing the, the, the power to the different regions. You mentioned marginalization. To what extent are they marginalized? How are they treated differently? Well, the, the, the requests that have been um, 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 put forward by uh, the teachers, by the lawyers and by some students are basically re requests related to uh, the fact that there is a need to recognize their specificity, uh, specificity in terms of uh, language and specificity also in terms of uh, um, judicial system, for instance. Um, so there has been a number of um, uh, commitments made by the authorities uh, in that regard, but they consider that this is, this is um, not necessarily enough. And what is important to remember is the fact that this is not a new debate uh, in, in Cameroon. This is a question that have been existing uh, for years uh, since the recreation of the centralized uh, power um, and and 
what we are seeing now is that there is a need for an, a very in-depth uh, the dialogue and, and debate uh, about those uh, marginalization issues. So like you say, it's not a new issue, but just how long has there been such a, well, some would say a violent um, repression um, because this fight uh, for, for recognition of, of, of their rights and their situation and even succession for some, it's turned violent. Lives have, have, have been claimed. Absolutely. And this is, this is perhaps what is uh, very different from what, um, what we have seen over the past few years um, is the fact that the response from the authorities um, has been a, a repressive response. Response. Um, they have not necessarily entered into, um, as we were seeing, an in-depth dialogue with um, with those who made th this request. And there has been a number of repression. What we have seen in uh, last October um, was um, very detrimental to the whole uh, dialogue process. Um, we have seen a number of uh, uh, protesters uh, going to the streets in the two uh, anglophone regions. And what we they have encountered is is this repressive uh, response from from uh, the military, from the police, uh, at least 40 p persons have been um, killed due to uh, the use of live uh, ammunition by, by the security forces and due to the use of, uh, of tear gas as well. We have seen a number of uh, arbitrary arrests and detentions. People have been injured. Um, and during the whole year, there has been a number also of uh, uh, restrictions to fundamental liberties, of uh, um, meeting, of assembly, of uh, demonstration, um, expression as well. So this repressive response by the authorities has certainly con contributed to radicalize the, the, the positions. Now, there's not just the difference in language. You mentioned culture and, and so a sense of identity. Um, I have to say it's reminiscent of the situation in Spain with Catalonia. Can any comparisons be drawn, do you think, and, or lessons learned? I think that what we could say is, is the fact that this is, this is, of course, because this is also something that we can see in, uh, in a number of different countries uh, in, in Africa in as Nigeria well. In Nigeria as well. Uh, absolutely. In Nigeria, we have seen it in, in, in Sudan, uh, South Sudan, and, and so on. So this is, this is a question that is not new. What is important is that uh, the authorities taking uh, into account this experience that we have seen in, in, in different countries uh, need to um, appease the situation and try to ensure that uh, it does not deteriorate further, especially because in, in the case of Cameroon, we are going to, Cameroon is going to elections uh, next year in 2018. So there is potentially a need for the authorities to consider this, this situation very seriously. And a need also I would have for the international community, the African Union, the United Nations to come on board also and perhaps help with the mediation process. Okay, well, thank you very much indeed for your time and your thank analysis. You. And thank you for watching. I'll be back at the top of the hour. Stay tuned.